Hey everyone, Dr. Richard Lai here with Study Acupuncture with me, and I welcome you to this week's episode. Let's start off this episode by highlighting one of you for leaving a five-star review. So now this five-star review comes from Mick Fai, who actually said, thank you for this wonderful podcast. It's clear, it's distilled, and it's so easy to take you on hikes with me so I can get the movement I sorely need while in crazy study mode for acupuncture school. This is a gift. First of all, I want to thank you, Mick Fai, for taking me on your hikes with you because being outdoors is actually a really good exercise and a good break from studying. And actually, it reminds me because I was recently scrolling through Twitter and this acupuncturist from New York City, he was hiking and he made a video that was connecting the five element correspondences with improving the health of all of your organs. And it actually blew my mind because he opened my eyes to the fact that because the liver opens into the eyes and the liver corresponds with green that there's tremendous value in appreciating all that greenery around you while you're hiking and i thought that was really amazing how he connected that so mick Fai, i hope you enjoy all your hikes and you take in all your senses especially those greens all right that's our five star review and again i thank you so much mick Fai. Now, if this is your first time here, I welcome you. My name is Richard. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm an acupuncturist. And I'm all about making content for busy acupuncturists and acupuncture students just like yourself. And I want to quickly remind you about my email list. I hope that you sign up to get free study guides to your email every week with each theory-based episode. So how do you sign up? You go to www.studyaccuwithme to sign up right now. All right, so what's today's episode on? Today, we're gonna answer a question that someone left on YouTube, and they asked a lot of really good questions about fluid transformation. And we're gonna get into all that and more after we hear a quick word from our sponsor. All right, and we're back. So recently, a Kiran Falk asked an amazing question on YouTube. So Kiran asked questions about the process of chi transformation, like how does the small intestine transport water to the bladder? Where do the good things go after the separation of good and bad? And these are all really good questions, so let's devote this entire episode to answering these questions. Now, right away, when I'm reading that comment that Kiran left, I can tell that Kiran is probably a very Western-trained person. Because when we're talking about the functions of the organs in traditional Chinese medicine, it can actually be really hard for us to separate what we learn from anatomy and physiology and what we learn about as the energetic functions of the organs and the channels. Because for me personally, I know it took me a while to grasp those two concepts. And the thing is, they're not all that different. It's just a lot easier to understand anatomy and physiology because it's all physically actually happening versus an energetic function in traditional Chinese medicine. So for this episode, I'm going to first talk about how parts of the digestive process work in terms of anatomy and physiology, and then I'm going to do my best to try to tie in the energetic functions of the organs in traditional Chinese medicine. So first, from an anatomy and physiology sense, like from a physical sense, our body makes urine. Now, how does our body make urine? Our body makes urine because our kidneys are going to filter out waste in our blood. And that waste, actually, it needs to go somewhere. It can't just go back into our bloodstream and back into our body. And here's where our kidney comes into play because our kidney is going to filter that waste out of the blood. And it's going to send that waste and that excess water that it's filtering to our bladder. And it's going to send it through our ureters. The ureter is just this tube that actually connects the kidney and our physical urinary bladder. Now, from there, our bladder is going to fill up and our body is going to sense that fullness. And then we go to the bathroom and we excrete that urine. We pee. So physically, all that is very easy to grasp. We have a filter. We have tubes. We have a bladder that collects and then we pee it out. Now, if we look at this process starting a little bit earlier from the stomach, our stomach is this organ that digests our food. It digests whatever water that we drink and it churns it in our stomach and it makes a mixture called chyme. C-H-Y-M-E. Now that chyme gets sent into our small intestine. And our small intestine is this really long organ. And in our small intestine, that chyme is just going to be continuously broken down. So our small intestine can absorb all the nutrients from that food, the nutrients from that water. Where do the nutrients go? The nutrients go into our bloodstream. And that small intestine is going to continue to move that food down the tract of the small intestine until it gets to our large intestine. And by the time it gets into our large intestine, 
that's when most of the nutrients and the water is already going to be reabsorbed by the body. And what's left is going to be our stool. And that stool eventually reaches our anus and it gets excreted out. So how does it connect with our small intestine and kidney then? So what happens in our small intestine is that it absorbs the nutrients and water from the food and it absorbs that nourishment into our bloodstream. So that's where our kidney is going to come into play because the kidney receives blood from our body and it filters that blood and it's going to send that filtered blood back to your body and it's going to send the waste and the excess water to your bladder via the ureter, which is that tube that connects your kidney and your urinary bladder. And our bladder is going to fill up. We sense it. We empty our bladder. So that's the process from a physical anatomy and physiology sense for the stomach, for the small intestine, for the kidney, and for the large intestine. So now if we look at the same process just from a different lens, so we change our lens from a physical anatomy and physiology lens, and we look at the same system from a complex energetic system lens. Now this energetic system is going to combine the physical anatomy of the organ with what's known as organ correspondences. So each organ has a mental aspect, it has an emotional aspect, it has a sense organ, a tissue, it has a taste, it has a color. All of these organs have correspondences because it's a complex energetic system. So with that being said, now let's look at the process of fluid transformation, but from an energetic system standpoint. So if we start with our stomach, our stomach is a yang organ. We have yin organs and we have yang organs. Yin organs more so have a function to store things. Yang organs, they don't store things, but they're constantly being filled and then being emptied, being filled and then being emptied. For example, the stomach filled up with food and then it's emptied. Our bladder filled up with urine and then emptied. Our large intestine filled up and then emptied. So yang organs fill and empty. And our stomach, what does it do? It controls receiving because food enters our mouth and it's received by our stomach. And our stomach has a function to R&R, to rot and ripen. And our stomach also has a chi direction. Its natural chi direction is to go downward because the stomach controls receiving. So food has to go down to be received by our stomach. So you can see there's an energetic principle to the function of the stomach. So after the stomach receives the food and drink and rotten and ripens it, that food and drink is going to go somewhere. It's going to go to our small intestine. And our small intestine has a function to also separate that food and drink. So it's going to separate it into a clear part, which is going to go to the spleen. And it's going to separate it into a dirty part that's going to go to our large intestine and our bladder. Now, the clear part that goes to our spleen is going to be broken down even further by the spleen because the spleen has a function to transform and transport. So it's going to break down that food and it's going to absorb the nutrients from that food and it's going to transport those nutrients to all the different parts of our body, more so to our arms and our legs. And because there's a breaking down of that food, there's going to be a dirty part to that. So where does that dirty part go? It goes back down to our intestines so that it can be broken down even further. So that brings us back to our small intestine again. That small intestine has that function to separate pure from impure. And we already talked about how it's going to take the clear, send it to the spleen. The spleen does that TNT, the transformation and transportation, where it just breaks it down, sends it to all the different parts of the body, and sends back the dirty part. So the small intestine continues that function of separation. And from here, it's going to send the clear part to the bladder, and it's going to send the dirty part to the large intestine. Now, here's where Kiran's question comes in. And Kiran asked, how does the small intestine transport water to the bladder? And this question is a really good question. And in order to understand the answer to this question, you have to take your mindset and separate the understanding of the material physical anatomy and the energetic relationship between all the organs. Because from a physical anatomy and physiology sense, the small intestine is going to absorb the nutrients and water from the food into our bloodstream. And our kidney is going to receive the blood from the body and filter it. And that waste that gets filtered out is going to go down to our bladder through the ureters. So that's the physical anatomy and physiology. Now, in traditional Chinese medicine, we look at the organs from a complex energetic system sense. So the stomach as an organ, it receives food and it rottens and it ripens that food into the food essence and food chi that we need. And our small intestine is going to receive that food and food essence from the stomach 
and it's going to separate it further into clear and dirty. And it does all that through the power that it receives from kidney yang. And then from there, the clear is going to be sent to the spleen, where it's going to be broken down even further. And at the spleen, the clear is actually going to be sent to the entire body, but also to the bladder. And it's at the bladder that we're going to see that transformation of fluid, which is the process called qi transformation. Because the bladder transforms the fluid that it receives into urine. It does that through the power of kidney yang, which at this stage in the process, it's called qi transformation. So specifically, how does a small intestine transport water to the bladder? Now, there is a specific organ that helps a small intestine transport water to the bladder, but it also helps all of the organs in all stages of fluid transformation, and that's the san jiao, that's the triple burner. It plays a role in that because it assists all the organs in transformation, in transportation, in excretion of fluids, in all stages of fluid transformation. Now, I do have a function of the San Zhao video where I talk about all of the functions of the San Zhao, so I'll link that in the description below, and I'll also put it up here. All right, now the last question that Kiran asks is, if by qi transformation water is removed, where does the water go? And the answer to that is simply that the pure fluid that gets transformed by that qi transformation, which is happening in the bladder, it flows up to the exterior of the body. The exterior of the body is the area between the skin and the muscles. This area is governed by our lung. And this is where that fluid gets transformed into sweat. All right, Karan, I hope that answers your questions about the process of fluid transformation. I know that these concepts can actually be really hard to grasp at first, but I promise you, after a couple of years of studying traditional Chinese medicine, it's still going to be hard. <laughs> Just kidding. It's going to get a little bit easier. But honestly, with traditional Chinese medicine, it's a lifelong process of learning and just absorbing. So we have to just fall in love with that process of constantly learning. And Karan, thank you for taking the time to ask a question. Anybody else who has a question, please ask it in the comments and I'll do my best to try to answer it and interpret it for you so that it's easy to grasp and for easy for you to understand. All right, everyone. So that does it for this episode. Make sure you sign up for my email list to receive study guides directly to your email. Make sure you go to www.studyaccuwithme.com to sign up. All right, everyone. Until next time, God bless and happy studying.